In a game where the Cubs scored a season-high 18 runs on 21 hits, we're going to talk about stolen bases. And no one more fun to talk about stolen bases with than PCA because we've got Mitch Keller on the mound who does not hold on runners very well and Yasmani Grandal behind the plate who does not throw out runners very well. The perfect combo for PCA. And he gets himself on base in the second inning with a two-out RBI. Everyone and their mom knows what's about to happen on the very first pitch of Miguel Amaya's at bat and they know so much that they decide to pitch out they almost throw a strike on the pitch out and that makes it nearly impossible for Grandal to throw out PCA that is another stolen base for Pete Crow Armstrong he's only been caught once this year and it was basically on a missed bunt attempt then Mitch Keller walks PCA you're just basically giving the Cubs an automatic double because you know he's going to run again but Miguel Amaya trying to bunt Miguel you're on your way to a four hit night brother do not bunt you know that Miguel is probably calling that one on his own, not counsel. Next pitch, and no, he throws over. You can see just how much Mitch Keller and the Pirates are thinking about PCA over there. But then on the next pitch, it's once again an attempted pitch out. Grandal double clutches. PCA is in there easily. You're really not giving yourself much of a chance when you double clutch with PCA. But then later in the at-bat, Miguel Maya takes strike right down the middle because PCA steals third base that's right stolen base number three it's only the fourth inning the last time a cub has stolen three bags in one game was tony campana in 2012 and the last time a cub has actually stolen four bases in a game was 2011 and you guess it tony campana so pca has a chance to do something really special here it's only the fourth inning and now the sixth inning he's on first base When Miguel Maya does this, it's a double. No, you stole a stolen base away from PCA. I was cheering for it so hard. But this is pretty crazy. I mean, by the time the left fielder even gets there, you can see that PCA is literally touching third base. That's how quick he is. The stolen base threat did not stop there, but some weird stuff started happening in this game. Seiya Suzuki with the double down the line, and did you see that? The ball disappeared. As we look at the replay on this one, you'll see we kind of zoom in here, going down the line, and then it's just, it's gone. It's gone. And then when you look at the side view here, the ball literally went under the door and then went down into the concourse. Fans are wondering what to do there. And then back to the stolen bases, Ian Happ with his first stolen base in the first inning. Then later on in the second inning, you've got Nico Horner stealing third base with Dansby Swanson at the plate. And then going back to Ian Happ here in the fourth inning, he's on first base. No throw down, as you would expect, because if he did go, runner on third probably would have scored. And then more weird stuff. Some weird stuff going on in this game. Domingo Herman with the Bach. What just happened there? Oh, it's the old, I'm going to drop the ball on accident, which intentionally deceives the runner. So we call it a Bach. I don't see how baseball can continue to keep rules like this. It's goofy, but the Cubs will take it. And then the sixth inning, final stolen base for the Cubs. Seiya Suzuki and Grandal just having all sorts of issues. It was the last stolen base because of this man. Dansby Swanson putting this game out of reach. A grand slam makes it 11-2. This is why you did not see another Cubs steal a base. But then the final weird thing, you got Rowdy Telez bringing his zero ERA to the mound, I might mention. Patrick Wisdom thinks he's going to get a break because last time he was out there, he got tossed for balls and strikes being argued but of course the very first pitch gets called a strike are you kidding me that thing's way up almost over his head he can't believe it oh poor Patrick well later on in the inning you've got wisdom actually taking one in the butt from Telez, and that's gonna actually prove costly for Telez. you'll see why in a second here by the way Luis Vasquez still looking for his first major league base hit and you don't want it to be against a position player like Rowdy Telez. so sacrifice fly that's kind of the best of both worlds if you're on that side of the ball for Luis Vasquez and then as I mentioned that hit by pitch actually comes back to haunt Telez because he ends up walking Mike Talkman with the bases loaded. That is run number 18 and the first that Rowdy Telez has ever given up in his illustrious pitching career. Again, Cubs score 18 runs, win it 18 to 8. Miguel Amaya and Seiya Suzuki with four hit nights.